Hookless is a technology which scares and confuses lots of people. So in this video, I'm going to explain what Hookless actually is. I'll also explain the clear pros and cons of the system. And then later on, I'm going to explain at what body weight using Hookless tires means that you need to switch to a larger volume tire. Something which I think will surprise a lot of different people. First thing we need to do is quickly explain what on earth Hookless actually is. And whilst the application and use of the tech can be pretty confusing, the principle behind it is actually really simple. What it means is the small hooked edge which was molded onto the inner surface profile of the rim is no more. We now just have a straight edge, hence the term TSS, which stands for tubeless straight side. It's a technology which is designed around the use of tubeless tires. And whilst you don't specifically have to always have the tires set up tubeless, you do have to use tubeless specific tires designed specifically for hookless rims. While the technology is specifically developed for the use of a tubeless tire, if you don't want to have it actually set up tubeless, you do always have the option of installing an inner tube inside your tubeless tire if you don't want the hassle and the stress of all that messy sealant. So, onto the pros. Now, the biggest advantage of hookless wheels is a reduction in weight. With the absence of that inner bead hook, manufacturers can trim down the amount of material used in the wheel at the manufacturing process. This is going to make the wheel ever so slightly lighter. I mean, don't expect to go out and start setting PRs and taking Strava KOMs everywhere because it's a relatively small weight saving, but it's in the region of around 200 grams per wheel set, which, in my eyes, is something still pretty reasonable. On to aerodynamics next, and hookless wheels do offer an aerodynamic advantage over their hooked counterpart. You see, having no bead hook means that there's a more seamless transition between the wheel and the tyre interface, which is going to help reduce aerodynamic drag. And much like the reduction in weight, this improvement in aerodynamics is relatively small. But hey, any advantage is a good one, right? In terms of rim strength, the manufacturing process used for hookless allows for a greater material density. But what does that actually mean? Well, it means that for comparable rim wall thicknesses, a hookless rim is going to be slightly stronger than its hooked equivalent. Hookless technology can also lend itself to gravel riding applications where, because you're using wider tyres at a lower pressure, there's an increased risk of hitting the wheel rim, either on roots or rocks. So that additional rim strength is going to be a good thing. That manufacturing process that allows hookless rims to be stronger also makes them easier and faster to produce, which allows manufacturing costs to be reduced. Now, it's hard to put an exact figure on this across all various brands if you compared hookless to hooked wheels, but I think it's fair to say the advent of hookless rims is one of the things which has helped reduce the price of carbon wheels in recent years. And then the final advantage for hookers that I want to discuss is really geared around comfort. You see, in terms of like-for-like -like wheel rim dimensions, hooked versus hookless, a hookless rim is going to allow your tyre to sit ever so slightly wider. This is going to allow your tyre to absorb more vibrations from the road, therefore improving the comfort they have. But not only that, and by absorbing those road vibrations before they're transferred up through the bike to the rider, it's going to result in a small speed increase for the same effort. Now, on a gravel bike such as this, with its wide tyres run at a low pressure, I think it's something that you're going to struggle to really feel and notice. However, on a road bike with its narrower tyres run at a higher pressure, I think there's much more of a scope to have an advantage in this area. Okay, so that's the advantages covered off. And in terms of looking at the wheel in isolation, 
hookless does seem to have some considerable advantages. But what about the flip side of this? Well, perhaps the most significant concern for many people regarding hookless is to do with tire security. You see, with the absence of that bead hook, there's an increased risk of the tire coming separated from the rim when pumped up to extreme pressures. And it's for this reason that we have the ETRTO maximal pressure limit. This safety organization have extensively tested hookless wheels and hookless tires and deemed 73 PSI to be the maximal safe working limit. If you exceed this pressure, then the force exerted on the tire bead could cause it to stretch and fail, causing rapid deflation, which would be a dreadful thing. And it's perhaps one of the biggest deals to get right when using hookless is your tire pressure and what tire width you use it. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that later on in this video. In terms of tire choices, you are going to be slightly more limited using a hooker setup compared to a hooked equivalent. However, most big brands have most models of tubeless tires available in a hookless compatible option. However, if your favorite tires are perhaps a clincher or tube type tire, or you want to run a tire width which is narrower than a 28 millimeter wide, then unfortunately, they're not going to be compatible with hookless wheels. Right, onto what for some people is the big sticking point about going across to hookless wheels and tires, and that is the pressure limit. Because there's probably lots of people sat at home watching this video thinking, hold on a minute, I normally run more than that 73 PSI pressure limit. What the hell do I do? Well, according to Zip and their online tire pressure calculator, a rider using a 28 millimeter width tire on a 23 millimeter internal rim width using a nine kilogram bike weight riding on dry roads, it isn't until you reach the 110 kilogram body weight that the Zip chart suggests which you would then need to move to a larger volume tire because you would need to use higher than 73 PSI which kind of doesn't really seem like such a big deal if you go by that calculator. Another reputable online tire pressure calculator suggested that for the exact same setup as what the Zip one suggested, it would be much closer to the 80 kilogram rider body weight where you would need to exceed that hookless pressure limit and therefore move up to a 30 millimeter wide tire to alleviate that problem. Of course, by doing that, you're gonna use a tire which is ever so slightly heavier and a little bit less aerodynamic. But as we've seen in multiple tests before, wider tires should certainly not be automatically considered to be the slower option. In fact, I actually reached out to Zip to hear their thoughts on this, and this is what they had to say. So first thing Zip pointed out is that hookless rims allow for a wider tire bed than a hooked rim of equivalent external width, which will make any tire sit a little bit wider and means less pressure is required to have the same overall tire performance, which is a pretty simple concept to grasp. But they then went on to say how their calculator requires users to input their tire width as written on the tires and also the rim's internal width. And then from there, the calculator will work out just how wide your tire actually is when it's installed and inflated. Whilst it recognizes that measured tire width is a driving factor for optimal tire pressure, other calculators that ask for measured tire width to be input are reliant upon people having accurate measuring tools to then get an accurate pressure recommendation out. One of the big takeaway pieces of information for me was that Zip explained how they've been researching and testing lower tire pressures for years and years. And all of their data shows that lower tire pressures could be advantageous for almost all riders. And this was way before their decision to go down the hookless route. And it was actually one of those factors which contributed to that shift in design. Now the actual pressure recommendation from Zip's calculator, they say is based around a combination of lab and field testings to provide you with a pressure recommendation based around what Zip call total system efficiency. Now this is a combination of aero testing and being able to differentiate between tire hysteresis and vibrational losses to provide a recommendation that Zip believes is faster out in the real world. And then finally, we've got a huge variation in tire pressure gauge accuracy on pumps with built-in gauges, whether that's reading ever so slightly high or ever so slightly low, which again leads to people rarely having their tires at the pressure that they actually thought they wanted or thought that they were using. Now, Zip say products such as standalone gauges or their own tire whiz will help here and are great ways to allow you to experiment with your tire pressures and then fine tune them based on what the calculator recommendations are. 
I mean, there's a lot of information to take in there. Good luck. <laughs> One thing I haven't really mentioned much yet is gravel riding. And whilst the application, the advantages and the principles remain pretty much the same for what they do on the road, the fact that you're using wider tubeless tires, typically run at lower pressure on gravel, does kind of feel as though hookless technology does lend itself even more to that application in very much the same way as how it's used in the mountain bike world. So there you have it, those are the pros and cons of hookless wheel technology. The advantages are undeniable, but do remember it does come with some of those trade-offs. But ultimately, the decision as to whether you go hookless or not is down to you, your riding style and your preferences. But armed with as much information as possible, you can head out and decide what is right for you. Which leads us to the end of this video. And I am really keen to hear your thoughts on the subject and if you've ever used a hookless setup before. So do let me know in the comments section down below. And also, if you found this video helpful, like it and subscribe to GCN Tech to help support what we do. Right, I'm out of it. See you later.